Hello, I'm the artist Michael Zotos, and um, today's May 8th, 2023. In this talk, what I want to um, talk about are the things that I've learned to date out there putting my art in public consistently where people can see it and talk about it that I otherwise would never have known and that most people who go out on an artistic venture don't know. It's going to be a little lengthy. I don't like to do long videos, but there's a lot to cover. I can't say the things I've learned and then put two things up, okay? And I'm going to be short and to the point, and, and, and that's what will happen. The first thing I learned that's significant is to do each element of the campaign, the effort, exclusively on its own by itself. Now, what do I mean by that? Well, if you're going to make the artwork and you're going to make a number of pieces to put out there in public, okay get to it and do that while you're doing that don't be thinking all, all along of course you have to consider where they're going who's going to see them but you have to concentrate they call it wearing various hats okay the hat at that time you're an artist concentrate on the artwork number two is when you're putting the art out there concentrate on that you, you are now an installer okay you are not a person who's a security guard Okay, you're not looking over your shoulder every two seconds as to who's going to take the pieces as you're putting them out. Okay, you do know certain things. Okay, you don't go outside a, a crowded night spot at 11 o'clock at night where there are yahoos out there drinking and start nailing uh, a piece of your art to a telephone pole for pedestrian traffic because normally that might sit there for two or three years. But these yahoos are drunk, they hear it, they hear the hammer, they see you. Goodbye, it's gone as soon as you leave. They take it, okay? And then they'll take other ones. Now, on that vein, I'll say this. Once a piece is missing from an area, a spot, a specific spot, and you want to put more back, don't put it in that exact spot because whoever took that piece is now comfortable taking the next one and the next one, okay? And, and that becomes their, uh, their, their spot, okay? Well, it's a funny thing. I don't know how come, but that's that's how it works. Now, let me take a look at my notes, okay? Uh, okay, when you're talking to the business owners, asking them for permission to put your pieces out on their front lawn, that's what you're doing. You're not making artwork, okay? You're not installing. You're talking to somebody. And the same with the politicians, the political people, okay? You're talking to a political person who, who handles possibly town board meetings, maybe variance meetings, there are certain protocols, behavior, and that's what you're doing. That's the hat you wear, not the artist hat. Yes, you show them the art. Yes, you say, I'm the guy you've been seeing the artwork out there. But, but you be the person who communicates well with the political person in that moment, okay? And the same with news reporters. At that point, you really have to have your head around talking to the news person, okay? And, and, and keep it short, I'm going to tell you something. These news people are very receptive. They'll sit there and won't say a word once they get you talking. But you better believe they know everything you're saying. They, they have tape recorders, and they will tell you that. And it's not a problem, but um, they're receptive. And then things come out in the newspaper that uh, will surprise you that they even caught that. <laughs> okay. And uh, so when you're communicating with a, with a, a newspaper, um, somebody doing a featured article, concentrate on that, okay? Be yourself, okay? Okay, when you're, pre preparing, when you're preparing promotional papers, photos, albums, um, a lot of people in the art world talk about making these um, scrapbooks. It's, it's difficult to make a scrapbook because it's tedious and it's a lot of work and you can make five big pieces of artwork in a week where you're making this scrapbook takes you all week. But if that's what you're doing, you have to stop and concentrate on it. Give it the time and do it, okay? So that. Okay, here's the second point that I wrote down. If a person sees the art out there on the highways consistently and has talked about it, has people talked about it to them, they like it, they want it, all right? But if they've never seen it before in their life, you can walk up to them with a photograph and say, what do you think of this artwork? And they, they, they're not even, you know, going to patronize you. They'll just walk away while you're talking. If you give them the picture, 
you'll find it on the floor later, <laughs> okay? And, and that's just the way it is. People have to see the artwork. So let's see the next one. Okay, each business person and or the political bodies have their own real reasons for allowing or disallowing. So don't bother arguing over it. And that's a, that's a situation now, if a business person has had problems with the town or the village over their signs and their parking and they're going for permits that you don't even know they're going to go for, they don't want your artwork all over their front lawn today. Okay, and you can't do anything about that. They're not going to tell you that. It might show up in the town board meeting, and they don't need that. They'll just say, "Ah, oh, no, we don't need that." The same with the political people. There are people in every town or village who are activists, and they're a pain in the ass, and, and rightfully so. That's why they're nice little towns and villages because people do things. But the actual political people who have to run for election answer to these people, and. They're going to have their agenda, they're going to have their way, and you can't fight with that, so don't bother, okay? Don't bother irritating them. Let's see what we have here. Uh, oh, start out always, and this is critical. If you're going into an area with the art, put a few up. Don't inundate the place. Don't blast it, okay? When you do that, everybody's offended. When you put six out there, spread them out over a mile. Two or three weeks later, you put another six. Once the season breaks open for quite a while, in the heat of it, you can inundate the place, but then take them down. Don't leave it inundated all through the dead season. Very critical here, which I didn't put as a note here, but it's seasonality is everything. I've done an, old, an entire report on timing, uh, you know, one of these art concepts. And seasonality matters. You have to, during downtime, be preparing and thinking. And go to the area where you're going to put your things up and see what's going on. Certainly when COVID hit, um, the world was a different place where I'm installing my artwork. The cities unloaded into the country and it was a different place. Well, you have to know that as you're preparing and deciding what to do. You can't do, you know, last year's campaign. And it's very important during the downtime, but in the busy season, you got to be there, okay? When people feel good about art and, and, and talking about it, you want them talking about your artwork. Now, the final thing I did write down, and this is a, a big clincher for me, and you may or may not have noticed it on some of my art talks, you have to be aware of your appearance. What happens is you're out there installing, you're home cutting and sanding and, and priming and painting plywood, it's nice to just throw on an old shirt because you can throw it on, do your work, run out to the grocery store, run up to the Starbucks in the old shirt, okay? And obviously when I come to do these talks, I change the shirt. But when you're out there installing on the highway and then you stop in this deli or diner or pizza place or whatever it is, you have to be aware and deliberately aware of your looks and what you're wearing. But other than that, I'll say this. Initially, when I started, I had to put my pieces everywhere to get people to notice them, even though they existed. Then over time, okay, because I go around with my photographs and talk to people and see who knows what and what they think of this and that, which is very helpful. That's where I learned that uh, the hand-drawn faces are very important as opposed to making it look really clean and sharp because it looks more like a person did it. And people told me, a lot of people told me that. And I didn't know that, I didn't expect that. But here's the thing, um, when uh, after you've had them out there for quite a while, you don't have to put them in everybody's face. You, you're not gonna put them in the middle of the woods, but you can, you can, you can be much more uh, um, uh, practical with what you're doing. They will find them, they will find them. I've had quite a few people, and when I say quite a few, you know, anybody can say whatever they want. I'm saying quite a few people of all venues, whatever you want to call it, genres, tell me, oh, and this is like a direct quote from at least eight different people. Me and my family, me and my children and grandchildren drove around counting these, drove around looking for these. That's not nothing. That's just the people I've spoken to, okay? Um, that's significant and you have to take something significant to heart and go with it. You can put them where you want to, 
and they will find one.